mateys, to another episode of Between Holes, the only current podcast brought to you live from the Pacific Ocean. And live indeed, I can say we're just a little bit closer to getting 50 subscribers on YouTube, which is what we need to live stream these podcasts for you. Today, I broadcast to you from 22 degrees, 56 minutes north, 1100, uh, no, 110 degrees, 11.6 minutes west. And if you're a geography buff out there, you'll know... That, that is right outside of Cabo St. Lucas. After five days at sea, we're getting close. Closer and closer by the day. Headed at a bearing of 111 degrees right now, going about six knots. Calm seas, two to four feet. With a true wind speed gusting up to 15, sitting at around 10 knots from the northwest. This morning, the U.S. Coast Guard needed us. We heard Sailing Vessel Catsby. Sailing Vessel Catsby, this is the U.S. Coast Guard. And funny enough, it had nothing to do with all the hashish and cocaine, uh, hashish we were smoking and cocaine we were snorting. Uh, no, they were looking for a boat and they uh, got in contact with us to see if they could find it. Also, just for the record, I'd like to say there is no hashish on board, nor is there cocaine. That was a joke meant for joking purposes only. Going on five days without a shower now. <laughs> Spectral Water Maker is having issues. There's a problem with the filters, which are kept down by the engines. Uh, and those are kept, if you can see, it's a little bit off camera, but right down below by the water line. Now, diesel powered engines have a very hard time with salt water. And we open the hatch. Tried to get down there, and waves from the back started washing up in there. So we had to put the kibosh on that until we get into Cabo, which hopefully we're going to be doing in about four or five hours. You can see the beautiful mountains behind me. It's wonderful. Once we get in there, calm seas, we can open the engine compartments off. When the engines are hot, no way you want to be in there. You'll lose a testicle or at least get cancer. Hashtag Lance Armstrong. Once we get in, we can go in there, change the filters, and hopefully get some fresh water. And we need it too, because we are rocking about 13% left in the tank. And the boat's great. It's a power plant. It makes its own electricity, but we're having problems with that too, actually. So we are still, for the most part, a conventional sailboat until we can get those problems worked out. It's nice. I'm looking forward to being on land again. I, I've never been to Cabo, but I hear it's a great fishing destination, and the fishing has been fantastic these last two days. We have caught probably close to 70 pounds of tuna at this point. This morning, just about 8.45 when I was on my watch, the reel started zzzz. Oh my god. It, it, I mean, it usually does that when you get a fish on, but this guy just wouldn't stop. I thought for a second maybe it was a shark, but that was really just my inexperience of fishing talking. It was a big old skipjack tuna, the biggest one we've seen so far. Probably about 20, 25 pounds. It took us a good long time to reel that into the boat. Shits are strong. Yes, they are. I also... Yesterday we were doing fishing all day. It's easy when you're trolling a line behind the boat and you're sailing. The the fish the fish just find themselves. I mean, seconds blend into minutes. You don't even feel those because they blend into hours, and it's hard to keep, even keep track of the day out here. So yeah, if you leave the line trolled, it feels like you're always getting fish because there's a lot of lullabies between holes on the Between Holes podcast. We caught a fish yesterday. We needed dinner because we were running out of food, so we decided to keep it. We took it in the boat, and I learned how to fillet, debone, and skin my own cuts of meat. Now, there is a video about this that will be coming up on our YouTube page shortly. I wore the GoPro chesty cam and learned how to fillet the fish. Chris, shot, Chris taught me. He is an expert fisherman. Everything uh, goes well when he does it. Of course, when I did it, I sliced directly through to the belly. 
dumping fish guts all over the deck of the boat. It was a mess. We bleed them out in the water. Okay, so this is how you do a, a skip back tuna, or really any fish, as, as far as I'm concerned. First step is to catch them. Then you got to reel them in. And then you put a tail rope on them, which uh, I'm not going to get the tail rope right now because there's no fish. But essentially, it's a cinch knot, and you put it around the fish's tail and cinch it way down. Then you take the hook out. And then is the gruesome part where you get out the fishing knife and you just stick it into the gills and slice right across the throat. And you do that on both sides so the fish will bleed out and you drop them in the water and let them drag behind the boat when you do it. It's pretty gruesome. I feel pretty bad about it, but apparently the fish doesn't taste very good if you don't do that. I don't know if that's a reason necessarily to be inhumane to the fish, but at the same time, all sushi grade fish has that done to it. So if you've ever eaten sushi before, this is how they're killing your fish. It just feels different when I do it with my own hands. But as I continue this uh, rambling story, it's worth it. Uh, you feel a sense of accomplishment preparing your own protein. And then once it's dead and drained, you take it into the boat, you lie it down on its side, and I don't know how to fillet any other types of fish. I imagine most of them are similar, but to get the loin meat off of a skipjack tuna, you make an incision right behind the fin all the way up to the spine to about halfway down the fish. That's the important part, because if you go too far or too deep, you're going to end up in the belly, and all of its guts are going to pour out. Unfortunately for the fish whose guts I drained, I also drained uh, the fish's uterus. It was so pregnant, and all the little baby eggs got everywhere. I felt... I felt not, I'm not laughing because I, I took pleasure from it. I'm laughing because it made me uncomfortable. And then you draw a line down about the halfway mark where the coloration starts. It, it, the, the fish is, is, is dark on top and light on the bottom. So you go right to that color line and cut right back to the tail. And then you cut along the spine and you just rip your loin off just like that. Then it's still going to have some bones in it. It's still going to have to skin off. You have to take that off. That's relatively straightforward if you can get to this point in the process. And then you flip it over. Each fish gives you two loins. The stomach meat is the real fatty and good part of the fish, but unfortunately, us humans have fucked that up for everybody, and we polluted our... You know, I, I really shouldn't curse there. It's not necessary. I, this is a cursing podcast. Uh, this is an aside. Whatever. We'll get to it another day. Hold on. Let me write this down. Cursing. Thank you very much for bearing with me as I try and do this... Uh, learning in process podcast the between holes cast anyway with the skipjack tuna what was i gonna say yeah the belly meat the belly meat is really good but us humans royally polluted our oceans to the point where there is so much industrial waste everywhere you have to be aware of mercury when you eat these fish and most of the mercury is stored in the stomach with that being said you can only eat about 12 ounces of tuna a week skipjack tuna and albacore tuna if you catch bluefin or yellowtail tuna that's even less because of the mercury the higher up the food chain of fish is and the bigger the fish is is the general rule of thumb the fish will have more mercury in that john so i filleted it we cut them up into little medallions then you rinse them with fresh water dry them off pat and we ate it for dinner last night i was so proud of myself i caught a fish i slit its throat i loined it I cooked it. Well, actually, technically Chris cooked it, but I've, I've cooked tuna before, so that, that, that part was okay. We ate it with teriyaki sauce over white rice, and when you eat a meal, you do the whole assembly line on, so to speak, you get double full because you get the satisfaction of the nutrients and the calories, and you get the satisfaction knowing it was a hard day's work. So congratulations to me, only because no one else is here to say it, but I'm pretty sure everybody would if they could. I've been uh, being a little self-introspective recently because I am somebody who wants to entertain for a living. I want to be a talk show host. I want people to want to listen to my voice. And I've been listening back to the first few episodes and I was getting a little bit bored. And if I'm getting bored of hearing my own self-talk, that must mean that you out there are getting very bored of hearing me talk. It's interesting. I'm trying to be interesting. 
but I'm also realizing that this is a learned skill that requires practice. So at the same time, it's kind of like, well, I'm 24, and if I want this to be my job, I kind of have to be a professional level good at it, but I'm not yet. So who knows? Maybe by the time we get to Panama, maybe by the time we get to Florida, once I'm off this boat, I have a very limited savings account, and uh, I'm going to try and make it work one way or the other, which is why I'm doing this right now. I'm doing it for the practice. I'm doing it to try and get comfortable talking pretty much to myself alone, I guess you could say. But uh, this is a learned skill. So, you know, if you have any tips, why don't you leave a comment? You can follow the show on Instagram at Between Holes. Send us a DM. We're on YouTube at Between Holes. Send us a DM. We have an email account, betweenholes at gmail.com. Send us a DM there. I'd give out my phone number, which at this point I don't have any problem doing, but we don't get reception because once again, the Pacific Ocean. In order to train my voice and become a better podcaster, you must think or ask yourself, hmm, well, what are other people doing that are successful at this? I've been listening to podcasts every single night on my morning watch and on my night watch after I call everybody. That's the time of day where I usually like to check in to the world. If we have a satellite connection, I can get that FaceTime audio ripping. Shout out Mimi, my little grandma who I call every night. She is a busy bee, but we're not here to talk about her right now. When I listen to the podcast, I've noticed a few things. The first is that most shows have more than one person. When you do that, it's a lot easier to tell jokes. It's a lot easier to riff off one of another. You can talk about things. As much as I have to say on a topic, if somebody else is here and with me and talking, like they will be in a bit, because you're going to invite some of the crew on next, it's a whole lot easier to talk. No matter how much I have to say on a topic, adding another person adds a, probably like 50 to 100% more of things to say on that topic. It gives me a rest. It gives my brain a char- time to charge and catch up to what we're doing in the conversation. And most podcasts, most popular podcasts have more than one person on them. Already I've been talking today for 11 minutes. We're going on 12 minutes. I'm running out of things to say, which is fine. I've also picked up from my podcast and the other podcasts that nine and a half, 9.8 times out of 10, shorter is better. When you run out of things to say, stop rambling, just stop talking. My journey continued past the multiple person podcast because I don't have access to that 24 seven on the boat. Everybody loves coming on. Captain Pete has a great time coming on. Chris has worked in radio for longer than I've been alive. So he's a great asset to have, but right now he's off somewhere smoking something somewhere doing something with somebody. I don't know. Uh, so I don't have him right now. That led me in my journey to find, try and find examples of single person podcasts trying to do things, trying to do shows, produce whole shows just alone. And what I noticed about them is they have access to a lot of news clips that people have pulled. They have access to a bunch of stories. A lot of the more popular ones seems like they have teams of people uh, preparing material for them to talk about. And the other, I don't have access to any of that, being at sea with a spotty internet connection and very disconnected to the world. But that is something I can get and I can do work on. If I did want to produce a show professionally, I think I would have to spend probably six, seven, eight hours a day preparing for the show. That might only be an hour, two hours with music tops, if that's the kind of thing that I want to do. A lot of these single person shows don't go on much longer than 30 minutes because how are you supposed to talk about stuff for that long? Unfortunately, uh, this is, I guess, again, trying to be concise, work with me here. The point that I'm trying to make is a lot of the single person talk shows out there too are very political and for some reason they seem to be ultra right wing, ultra conservative. Think of Ben Shapiro, think of Matt Walsh, think of a bunch of the other bigoted podcast hosts out there who, to be fair, I guess, present logical arguments, but 
I think that the fundamental logic they're basing those arguments on is flawed, and that's why I disagree with them. Whatever. It seems to be that there's a huge market for that. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, depending on your viewpoint, I'm not really interested in doing that. That's not really my cup of tea. So, it has been interesting every night listening to these far-right political talk shows in the dead of night with nothing but ocean sounds around me. <laughs> I, I honestly, I shut the door back to the boat because I don't want any of the other crew to know <laughs> what I'm doing. But the reason I'm listening to them isn't for the content. It's to hear the cadence of their voice as they speak. It's to hear the ups and downs. It's to hear where they take their pauses where they enunciate things, why they get so excited and talk fast when they're trying to make a really good point, and then they kind of back off. Let you think about it for a second. I was listening to this uh, chick. What's her name? Stacy something? Cecilia? I don't know. I, I, I also really don't need to give her too much publicity. She was going on this diatribe about how horrible it is that transgendered people exist and it was it was pretty hard to listen to, but I, I noticed a few things in her speech patterns, and over the course of the next couple of episodes, I might focus on one individual podcaster and try and, you know, incorporate their speech patterns, their cadence, into what I'm doing, as I'm trying to do today. I hope it's being interesting. Anyway, enough of that. You're done hearing about me. Live, if you... Listen to the podcast live. We are able to do this awesome feature called the song of the day. Unfortunately, due to copyright issues, I'm going to have to cut it out of the final podcast and I'm going to have to cut it out of the YouTube over there. Today's song of the day, a brand new segment on the Between Holes Morning Show, Mr. Hurry Up and Come by Black M.I. This is a jammer. So if you're following us live today, sit back and relax. There's nothing to do but look out at the ocean and enjoy life. Welcome to the Between Holes Podcast, baby. This is Mr. Hurry Up and Come. Oh, that was Mr. Hurry Up and Come by Black and I. That just puts me in a good mood. And if you want to hear it, you should go and listen to it on your own because I cannot help you. I, I do not have music licenses. I do not have a commercial music license. They are very expensive, and uh, quite frankly, I don't even know how to get one. That's the other thing about doing a solo show. All of my favorite DJs that I've worked under, worked with, aspired to be, have all had those. So when they have a break or they want to stop talking, they can just play a song. I can't do that. Anyway, all of the crew seems just about busy today, so that's just about going to do it for us today on the Between Holes podcast. We'll check in from Cabo tomorrow. Until then, try and kill your motor. Try and stay breezy. Robbie, out. Peace.